I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies and today I want to compare the Hoyt Prevail SVX 37 to the new 2018 PSC Perform X bow. This is a 40 inch bow. I want to compare them head to head. We're going to shoot them, put them through the chronograph and see which one I prefer and then you can make up your own mind and go down to a local shop and try them both out and see which one you prefer. Now I'm going to start with the Hoyt Prevail. The Hoyt Prevail came out in 2017. It's a hybrid cam system. It has two cam options. The one we're trying today is the SVX. This is the faster of the two cam systems. This uses a module based system to change the draw length. It only allows one inch of draw length adjustment. Both the, cam, the bow now comes with both modules. This bow is a 29 inch, it's a 29 inch um, bow. It has the adjustability just to 28. That's it. Um, so up the top you have a yoke. Down the bottom is a standard hybrid cam. You've got a cable stop down the bottom and you have basically just a normal cam groove here so no limb stops on this bow. The bow here, the cable guard is adjustable in and out to reduce torque. The bow itself is 37 and a quarter inches axle axle and it's meant to shoot at 320 feet per second. Um, its mass weight is meant to be 4.8 pounds. So with that, what we're going to do is we're going to first off compare the mass weight. Now this has got a whisker biscuit and a hunting sight on the bow to the PSC Perform. And we're just going to see which one of these bows is lighter. Okay, we're ready to go. Okay, the mass weight of this bow comes in at 5.2. 5.2 pounds so it was rated in the instruction manual at 4.8 it's got a whisker biscuit and a sight on it so whatever that works out to this is the perform 40 inch axle axle it's got a twin cam system with a yoke top and bottom it's adjustable in draw length from 26.5 to 32 inches and adjustable in let off from 65 to 75% let off it's rated IBO speed is 332 feet per second. Um, its mass weight is published at 5.2, so about 0.4 pounds heavier than the Hoyt. So we're just going to put the little mass thing on this and measure the weight. It comes in at 5.7 pounds. So it's coming in at 0.5 heavier than published, which is pretty much equivalent to the Hoyt. Um, so this bow is a significantly heavier bow. Now the color options on the Hoyt. Um, the Hoyt comes in, let me just compare colors because colors is extremely important to everyone. Um, the Hoyt comes in a red, a blue, a teal, a brown, a black, a green, an orange, a silver, and a purple. Now for 2018, the PSE Perform, and I'm probably going to forget some colours, but they've got a whole heap of colours this year. So this is the gold. It comes in silver, red, dark cherry, which is a dark red, blue, silver, black, um, bronze, rose gold, purple, green, I think that's it. So I think PSE has got more colours for this year. Now the limbs on both bows. PSE is using your Gordon Glass limb, which they use on all their bows, um, which basically is a compression limb. So it pulls down on the limbs to create more string and uh, more um, tension on the strings and cables. Now while the Hoyt bows use the Gordon Glass limbs, they don't use it in their target bows. In their target bows, they use a laminated limb, which you'll see there. And it doesn't have the compression on it of a Gordon glass limb. And the limbs are not parallel. So on the PSE, you'll see the limbs are parallel. With this one, when you shoot it, you'll feel a little bit more vibration forward. The Hoyt does have the ability to change the grip here. You'll see a little bit of plastic here to change the angles. And I think it may come with that kit in it. Um, the PSE has got the ability to move the limbs left to right using the lateral locking system 
um, just there. And they also have a wedge lock system there to lock the limbs in place. So basically stop the limbs moving. Wheat don't have such a system, um, but they do have a full metal limb pocket system. Oh God, I'm going to say that and it's going to be plastic, isn't it? No, it's plastic. So I was going to say this is um, metal here, but no, it's not, it's plastic, which is exactly the same as PSE. This is a machined component here with the PSE limb system, limb pocket system. This whole pocket is machined out of a single block and this here is pulled into the side to basically stop the limbs from moving. With the Hoyt system, they're two individual components and it doesn't lock in. It's just a, it's just a pocket. So with the PSE, they physically lock the limbs in place. With the Hoyt system, they're basically free floating. So there's a significant difference. The limb system here is basically the same on the Hoyt as far as um, wanting in and out the bow. Um, so on the PSE, you've got a lot more adjustment in draw length um, and let off, but the bow is heavier. Whether you want heavier or not, that's another question. Um, but we are comparing the 40 inch version to the 37, the 40 inch Hoyt equivalent. I'll just check the stats is five pounds. So the PSE perform is still 0.2 pounds heavier in the 40 inch version than the PSE, than the Hoyt and the 40 inch version in the Hoyt prevail is 317 feet per second where this one's rated at 330 feet per second. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try the draw cycle out. Um, the overall finish of the bow, um, I would say they're on par with each other. Um, I wouldn't, the anodizing I think on both bows is immaculate. The limbs I'm going to say look better on the Hoyt, the limb graphics look better on the Hoyt and I'm going to say I'm probably going to prefer the feel of the PSE limbs without even shooting it but that's the whole purpose of this video to compare the way they pull shoot and their speed through the chronograph. So let's go on, let's go to the shooting range and let's try these both these bows out. Okay, so we're here now to try the draw cycle of both bows. Now on the Perform, the PSE Perform, you can adjust the draw length just through rotating the module. You don't need a bow press and you can change the let off just by moving the little stop at the back there. Really simple. Um, so if you want to try 28, I'm 28 and a half inch draw length. If you want to try 28 and a half or 29 inch, simple process of moving the module. So let's try the draw cycle. So both these bows are set on maximum 60 pounds. They're both six, they're both 60 pound bows. It starts off really solid and then it's valley, 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 really big valley and dead stop. I'm going to take the shot. And there's a little bit of vibration there pushing out after the shot. But the draw cycle is really easy. I'm going to say a pretty big valley. It's not one of those bows that wants to rip out of your shoulder. So I'm going to say that bow is going to be easy for anyone to shoot. Now the grip, as soon as I grab the Hoyt, compared to the PSE, I notice the Hoyt grip significantly thinner than the PSE. The bow you can feel straight away is significantly lighter than the PSE. Um, and this is just personal preference, which one you like the feel of. Now the balance on this bow, being 37, it's kind of like the, shoot, the Perform 3D, which we're not comparing it against, but the Perform 3D, which is 36 inches, is a very similar balance to this bow. It's still top heavy, and I think the shoot down is not as much. So we're going to just try the draw cycle out, and we're going to take the shot. So it starts off, the start off, oh, I remember, so the first point is this gets in the way of my release aid and it's, I remember now when I did the review, this got in the way and it kind of bugged me, it still bugs me. Um, so the distance between the, the string and the cable guard on the, on the Hoyt is much closer than the PSE, it doesn't even get there. And the other point is the cable guard on the PSE is actually in here where the Hoyt actually sticks out further. So that's kind of interesting as well. 
and I'll just sort of show you both comparisons. So there's, you can see the cab guard sticking out, and you can see the cab guard on the PSE is actually on the inside. Okay, so we're going to take the shot. Now I'm going to say this bow to start with, in the one inch I've drawn this bow, is easier than the expression for the first inch. So the expression builds, sorry, the expression the PSE perform builds up much quicker than the Prevail. So, God, that, that cable guard is... I could not shoot this bow because of the cable guard. It's just... I would have to try the 40 inch because that just gets in the way. Now the grip itself is much, much thinner and it kind of, it'd be something I'll have to get used to. Used to, I'm very used to the ho of the PSE grip. Um, and PSE used to have a narrow grip and they went wider. So it's kind of interesting how narrow it is. Marla. Back here, darling. Good girl. Right, so we're going to take the shot. So it starts off there lighter. Now it's building, building. feels really heavy at that point. Really heavy, really heavy. Dropping, dropping, dead stop. Now back here, it feels significantly heavier than the PSE. I'm going to take the shot. Wow. Whoa. Okay. So it feels like a 50% let off when I'm back there. I, I Honestly, I didn't check what the let off is on this bow, but the PSE in comparison feels like a 90% let off. And it's not at 75. This, the draw length is, the sorry, the valley is much, much shorter. No comparison. You kind of hit it and you don't know you're there. Um, if that makes any sense. Like... It builds up, builds up, gradually drops off, and you kind of, there's no valley there to work with, and you're like, have I hit the wall? So I'm going to do this shot again. Now the sound of the bow is completely different. It sounds like a guitar, strumming a guitar when you kind of shoot it. So there it feels really heavy. And there, even here, it feels really, really heavy. I'm going to take the shot. much noisier much noisier in fact what surprises me about the Hoyt I don't feel much vibration in the way forward it kicks up like that probably more so than the PSE did but the draw cycle on the PSE just wipes it as far as a feel of a bow to shoot this bow feels so much harder and it feels like I'm I don't even feel like I'm in the valley maybe I'm not in the valley I mean, this bow is straight out of the factory. It's it's on C. The modules are C. It's 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 quite. It's a big. It's it's very different to shoot. It um, kind of sounds like an old bow when you've shot the old bows from a long time ago. The way it kind of comes out, it's like boom. The PSE is crisp. It's pshaw. so. Yeah, this bow is much harder draw cycle, and much harder to aim when you're back there aiming. Now, if you shoot all the time, there's heaps of target archers who set, who have success with the Hoyt Prevail. And if you shoot all the time, that low let off, you're probably not going to feel. And in fact, I prefer a low let off. Um, I don't know if I prefer it that low because man, that is low, um, and it's short. It's really, really short. So we're going to put these bows through the chronograph now and check their speeds. And I'm going to just use my normal target arrows, which are a fairly heavy arrow. And we're going to compare the difference in speed. Now, one of the questions you're probably going to ask is what difference does speed make for a target bow? Well, for me, it means I can shoot a heavier arrow and get less, less wind drift. And also I'll be in the air basically less. Now, the difference between 330 feet per second and 321, I think it is, 
is very minimal. Um, they were just trying to compare like and like to compare the difference and what bow is better and what and the reason why it is better. So let's go and try it out on the chronograph and see how it goes. Two arrows to the chronograph. One is a um, gold tip velocity, which shoots um, weighs 330 grain. The other is the VAP, which I've been shooting, the VAP 350s. And these have got 140 grain point in them. I don't know how much they weigh. I know the gold tip weighs 330 grains. That's got a 90 grain point. So to me, this is, this arrow is too light for target archery. It's more of a 3D arrow. Um, so let's see what sort of speed we get. And that's 304. Now yesterday when I did the bow test, I got 305, 305, a 301, and now a 304. That's with the victory. Now let's compare the Hoyt Prevail. The IBO on this is about 10 feet per second slower. So this will be interesting to see what sort of speed we get. And this bow feels to draw, to shoot so much harder in the draw cycle you'd ex be expecting a faster speed because there's so little let off at the back. That's a two, 298, so six feet per second slower um, than the PSE. And a much harder draw cycle. Now we're gonna shoot this one with the VAPs with the 140 grains. These arrows are a lot heavier. And in fact, I'm gonna try even heavier arrows than this coming up um, for target archery to try and avoid wind drift. So let's just shoot this. That's a 262 feet per second. Now with the Hoyt, what you've really got to do, you've got to draw that bow back and just keep pulling it and pull it really hard because there's no valley. You've just got to pull hard against that stopping, just keep pulling. And that's the way a lot of top shooters will shoot. But not a bow, in my opinion, for a beginner. So we got 262, now the PSC Perform with the VAP, 350, 140 grain point um, arrow. That was a significantly, significantly faster speed with a heavier arrow, a 277. So that's 15 feet per second faster with the heavier arrow than the Hoyt, 15. Now the IBO difference was 10. 322 versus a 332. So 10 feet per second, but with the heavier arrow, we got 15 feet per second difference. So with the lighter arrow, less difference. With the heavier arrow, more difference. 15 feet per second is significant in speed difference. Now, in overall shootability and overall the way I've liked the bows, I like the PSE overall. Um, I think the colors are, are good. I love the adjustability and draw length and let off. I think it's an easy bow to shoot. My downside is the weight. And I'm going to question whether this bow is going to be too heavy for a lot of archers in physical mass weight. Um, now, obviously, target archers put a stack of weight on their bow with stabilizers. So I think my bow weighs about 11 pounds by the time I've weighed it up with weights. And most of the world champions are shooting far in excess of that. So there's an argument there where well, PSE have added the weight into the bow so you don't need to add as much weight into the stabilizers. 
but I'm talking about beginner archers, people getting into archery, this is a heavy bow. Um, and there's other target bows in the market which are four pounds um, for beginners, which would be probably more suitable in my opinion. But comparing like to like, um, the PSE versus the Hoyt, I think the PSE has got a better draw cycle, better value as far as the holding, it holds better on the target than the Hoyt. And I think the vibration is less with the PSE and I think the PSE is quieter as, as well. So for all those, all those um, attributes, I think the PSE is a better target bow. Um, price point on these bows is the same, 2,150 Australian dollars. Um, now I don't think there's any coincidence that these bows are the same price because now PSE is going, well, this is a top quality bow. Um, and they are having success on the world stage with the with the perform as Hoyt have with the prevail Hoyt have heaps of success on the world stage, but as as far as the shooters concerned I think a shooter is going to prefer the PC perform over the Hoyt but go and try them and um, Drop it in the thing. I have had one One archer try both bows and in fact they tried all the bows in my shop um, last week um, and they did buy the PC shoot down, which is why I haven't done a review on it. So the shoot down is basically a lighter version of the perform. So I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. That's the PC versus the PC perform versus the Hoyt Prevail SVX 37. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Bye.